In this video, I demonstrate how to use the shelf tool to set up a flip sim and white water sim because the white water sim built on top of the flip sim. The workflow is quite different from putting nodes down manually as what I've been doing in previous videos and explaining them node by node. Okay, I first start off by dro dropping down a geometry node. Then I want to drop down a test object, uh, the rubber toy. Good idea to put down an out node. Go back up. I'll just leave it as that. Select this node. Go to the shelf tool for the particle fluids and click this flip fluid from object. It then generates this uh, auto dump network which is our flip fluid simulation. I'm gonna go back up. I'm gonna organize this a little bit. Okay. Go back into the auto dump network. Select this flip fluid object. Go to the particle fluids. Click the white water. Now it's going to be asking you select fluid for generating white water. Press enter to complete. So we're going to uh, select the flip fluid object. Then hover your mouse over the 3D viewport and press enter. So after you generate the white water solver and the white water objects, come down here. Make sure you have white water solver uh, sim, sim selected. Have that selected. Then come up here, particle fluids, oh sorry, collision, and click ground plane. So it puts a ground plane on the white water solver as well. So I'm just going to organize this a bit. So come back up here. Now I'm going to also add a ground plane to the auto dump network of the flip fluid. So there's something uh, for this body of water to land on when it falls down. So let's go to the auto dump network of the flip fluid. In here, I'm going to add a ground plane. Come down here, press this. Make sure this is selected auto dump network, which is this one right here. And then come to collisions and click ground plane. And there it is. Now this is a bit uh, high for the ground plane. I want the body of water to fall down a little bit. So here's the ground plane. I'm gonna raise the rubber toy so it's a little bit above ground. Drop down a transform node, put it after the rubber toy and just raise him up a bit. So yes, bit of room to fall down. So after all that is complete and just play. Now I'm just going to play a few frames. So that's the simulation with the white water. So let's take a look. That's the white water. This is the fluid. Let's turn the white water back in, back on. For a higher quality simulation, decrease the value of the particle separation. Here are two renders done at 0 0.1 and 0 0.01 particle separation for your comparison. For a deeper explanation on why, please refer to a previous video I did titled Flip Simulation Collisions with Complex Geometry in Houdini. And around 4 minutes and 40 seconds, I start to explain the details of particle separation. Green white water particles, which I thought were generating very nice results, but then I wondered how it was possible to create those smooth looking streaming white water uh, that was streaming on top of the water fluid. But it wasn't until I saw Side Effects' white water shelf tool documentation, and that's where it led me to the scent density node. Part of the reason for creating this video is to show you where to, you can look for in the shelf tool to find a node called set density. 
that is provided by side effects. So you can use it to create white water volume that was intended for another vi tutorial video. Link in the description. Now let's go into the white water import node right here. In here, you will find the set density node right here. Now this is the node that side effects provides for us when we create the white water simulation through the shelf tool. So this is where I learned how uh, how to calculate the density out of uh, out of the attributes given by the white water attributes. If you look here in this dot uh, IO, which is extra extracting all the white water data okay, nail this down and then it has age depth life position p scale velocity and all that good stuff that's coming from the white water simulation and inside the set density attribute wrangle we see that side effects is using the age the depth the form, foam location, the fade in time, and a depth range to calculate the density. Now the age and depth are attributes used, um, are given by this whitewater simulation. They're from here. Fade in time is an parameter that you fill in here that you can fill it in here so that's something that you can control the foam location is here which if you look closely it's if you press this button left click this it will show you where this parameter is coming from where the value is coming from inside the white water solver goal depth that's the value that it's reusing i'm just going to go in there really quickly So white water foam location. If we hover over this, it, you'll see that it says foam location parameter goal depth. So this is the goal depth um, parameter that it's linking to. Oops, sorry. Here. That's what's used to link to this parameter. We also have a depth range that we can control as well. So all of this is used to, to calculate a new density value. And as you can see, S side effects has thrown down a volume rasterized attribute node. Now what this one does, it takes the density from this node and it converts it into a volume. Oops. So we get a density volume here. And once you have this, all you have to do is throw down a volume material in order to render this out. This video was meant to be a quick tip video, so I kept it as short as possible. If you need more information on how to render volumes, please check out this video for setting up a volume material. Link in the description. I'll post this Houdini file up for download, and again, link will be in the description, but it will not include the Redshift materials because that goes against the user agreement. I will include sticky notes that describe all the parameters that I've changed in the materials so you can easily recreate your own Redshift materials. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.